this is Mike Green, and this is Riel Abanjo. What you just saw was the pattern player in action. We'll get back to that in a minute, but first, let's go over some of the basic features. With Riel Abanjo, the notes are all playable here in the blue keys area. Now, there are five strings on a banjo. There's the low D string, which we extended the range down to a low C, but it's still the low D string. There's the G string. Then there's the B string. And then there's a higher D string. And then the high G string. For each of these strings, we sampled all the way up the fretboard. This gives us the ability to play in various fret or capo positions. You can adjust the fret position with this menu, or we included these yellow key switches. You can have the banjo open, which is the most common way to have it, or play from the first fret position, which is like if you had a capo at the first fret, or second fret position, and on up the fretboard. The sound gets a little darker as you go up the fretboard. It's a useful feature, although most of the time, a banjo player will be in the open position, so I'm going to leave it open here. Now, with Riala Banjo, we recorded round robins as well as loud and soft dynamics, but we also recorded slides up and slides down. This is useful because a banjo player often slides into one note or another. Did you hear that at the end of the phrase? Instead of each note being picked like this, we did a little slide. Banjo players do that a lot, where they might play a second and lead into the third, and maybe they'll throw in a sixth and have that lead into a fifth. Now, a banjo player will typically do a slide like this if he's playing two notes in a row that are either a second apart or a minor second apart. It's kind of a banjo thing. So we programmed an auto legato feature that automatically detects whether an interval is a second or a minor second, and if it is, it plays a slide. If it's a larger interval, it plays discrete notes. So you can play a pattern and the auto legato feature will take care of where to put the slides automatically. If you don't want this to happen, then you can turn off this feature, in which case all notes will be picked. Now, whether the auto legato switch is on or off, you can still force a legato by holding this B key, the one below middle C. Then any notes played while this key is held will have slides into them. With slide. Without slide. Okay, that's enough about legato slides. Now, let's move on to the articulation switch, where we can select between normal sounds, which is what we've been hearing, and the mute sound. To hear how this might be useful, here's a piece where the first part is with the normal sound and the second part is with the mute. Cool, right? So now let's look at the pattern player. The way this works is you'll notice we have two octaves of green keys that are above the playable blue keys. If you play a chord anywhere in this section, then the pattern player will automatically play an authentic banjo pattern, or roll, for that chord that you just played. And it doesn't matter which inversion you play, the software still recognizes what chord it is. And it can not only recognize major chords, but also minor chords. As well as dominant seven chords. And minor seventh chords. And even suspended fourths. And again, you can play any inversion of these chords in any key, and it syncs with your sequencer. Not only that, you have a choice of 12 different pattern styles. These are selected from the interface or by these red key switches. What we've been hearing so far is pattern one, which is probably the most all-purpose of the pattern styles. Pattern two is actually my favorite. It has more of a down-home kind of style with some extra twang to it. Pattern three is a higher pattern. 
This uses higher notes. This is a pretty cool pattern as is, but where it can really come in handy is if you're playing a more normal lower pattern and then you kind of want to set it apart. Check out this example. I'm going to start with pattern style 2 for 2 bars and then I'm going to move up to 3 and you'll hear how it gives it a little extra punch. Pretty cool. You just play a bunch of chords and let the pattern player do its thing. And as I mentioned earlier, you can use these red key switches to change patterns. That's how I switch from pattern 2 to pattern 3 in that sequence we just heard. So let's use the next key switch to call up pattern 4, which is another all-purpose sort of pattern. Pattern styles 5 and 9 are meant for more rock kind of applications. Think Mumford & Sons. I should mention that for bluegrass and country, the Riala banjo pattern player really comes in handy because otherwise those patterns can be kind of hard to figure out on your own. With rock, you can still use the pattern player or it's not that hard to just play them yourself. Check it out. I've got a rock sequence I recorded earlier and the banjo that you're going to hear will be Riala banjo played live. Like I said, bluegrass patterns can be tricky, but rock kind of stuff, those are pretty easy to play yourself. So, back to the pattern player and patterns that aren't so easy to play yourself, here's pattern six, which is a more laid back roll. Then pattern seven is an old school traditional roll. And now that I think about it, let's turn on this end with chord switch, which automatically adds an ending chord. Realitone thinks of everything. <laughs> so next is pattern 8, which is a more complex pattern. Oh, this is fun. Moving on. We heard 9 earlier, but pattern 10 is a fun one I'm not even sure how to describe. Check it out. Pattern 11 is another traditional roll. Last but not least, pattern 12 is really cool. you can drag and drop any of these onto your DAW. It takes whatever your currently selected pattern is for whichever chord you're currently playing so you can drag it to your sequencer and edit or whatever you're in the mood for. And then we have the humanized slider and a swing slider and speed settings which are useful if your DAW is currently at half or double the tempo of what would make sense for Riala Banjo. And the most important control of all, the animation reset button. Uh-oh. The dog disappeared. Let's see if he comes back. Yeehaw! And that is Riala Banjo. You know you want it, so head on over to Realitone.com and pick up a copy. Thank you.